we just want to give a big shout out to two people who actually said that they watched this video that came to the last meetup. Hi Larissa and Hi Larissa. Hi, Hello. Hi Mike. You realize that if we get those names wrong, it's all Pepe's fault and we've lost like 2% of it. Okay. Hello everybody and welcome to the Filipino Freethinkers podcast that's also a video. I'm Red. I'm Pepe. And I'm Kenneth. So today we're talking about two things. The first one being the ethics of spoilers and the second one, dumb comments on intelligent articles. So let's start with the first one. Spoilers, do you like them? I, I find I have no actual problem with them. Okay, you're neutral. Yeah, in fact, if it were up to me, I would actually prefer to be spoiled. Okay, so you're for spoilers then. Let's, let's count you on that uh, side. And are you for Incidentally, spoilers? Incidentally, about Breaking Bad. The I'm against spoilers. You're against spoilers? I, I don't want to be... Because it, it destroys my experience of the story. At least that's what I, I've learned. Okay, so we have one person against spoilers, one person for spoilers. False and equivalence in the media. I'm against spoilers, so that decides it then. <laughs> spoilers are bad. No, seriously, let's, let's talk about it. Uh, recently, Breaking Bad just finished, right? Yes. And a lot of people are so excited about, about it. The that fact <laughs> what? Uh, who died? <laughs> Because there are a lot of characters in that show. Was it Breaking Bad who died? Yes. Breaking Bad himself? Yes. Or, or I don't know. Okay, I'm not spoiling anyone. Maybe someone died in that show. Maybe it was Breaking Bad himself who died. But, but seriously though, a lot of people are so excited about the show that they've posted reactions to the ending. And a lot of people who don't want to be spoiled see it and they're just irked. Where are you in Breaking Bad? I haven't even started the last season. So, so you haven't started season yeah, five? Yeah, so I'm very prone to spoiling. I, I usually watch these things like in a marathon. Yeah. I wait for people to finish it and tell me, oh, give me a general like feel of is the story good or did you find it enjoyable? And if, it's, if the answer is positive, then I will watch it. So let's talk about the ethics of it now. I think from the, from the word itself, it's called a spoiler because it spoils something. It spoils maybe the enjoyment, like maybe it detracts from the enjoyment. And do you think it's ethical for someone who does like spoilers? Do you think it's ethical to spoil someone else? We could um, use, we could put it in an analogy. In the same way as to whether spoilers are ethical or not. We can ask ourselves, was it ethical for example in Game of Thrones? Yeah, we're gonna bleep this what? stuff out. We're gonna. That's why you're only here now, because <laughs> we're taking a risk putting you on. But seriously though, like as a as someone no, who uh, likes um, it, yeah, th there are. I think that there there is a certain. I mean, it, it it just boils down to respect. If somebody says, "Please don't spoil me," then I think that you should do your best not to spoil somebody else. However. I wonder if that doesn't go both ways. Like, there are conversations that I, for example, would like to be having with other people on the table, but then suddenly you can't talk about it because there's one guy who has not watched it. Titanic. Despite the fact that everyone else has Hasn't watched it. Hasn't seen. Right, right. Either yeah, Titanic Sixth or, Sense. Yeah, Sixth Sense. Usual or, Suspects. Right, right. Like okay. Kaiser Soze. I have that. Well, well, that's... Okay, then. It's... So okay, let's uh, let's have some balance. Can okay, let's have, let's have some balance here. Yeah, why is it bad then? Like like let's say you're 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 having a dinner conversation with someone, and someone <coughs> says that this person from Baking Bad died in the end. Like, why is it bad for you? Why, why does it? Why is it unethical? Well, the the point of I mean, there are these narratives in literature and in movies and many different forms of art that rely on the element of surprise to achieve the desired emotional effect. Yeah. And when you um, spoil someone, you're depriving them <coughs> of that of, of ha getting the best from this piece of art. Mm. So it's, yeah, it's making, making the experience not as good as it could be. Yes, and I also think that it takes away what the author of the work 
wanted the the reader or the viewer to experience. Mm -hmm. If they wanted to some information to be told to the reader earlier, then it would have been in the text. Mm -hmm. This is and for you to say, I mean, for someone else, for for a third party, to to come between that relationship that the the viewer has with the director or with mm -hmm. the with the author, I think it detracts from the from the work of art. Uh, Stephen King used to comment, and that's why he wrote his book, The Green Mile, the, one, is the first time he ever serialized something. Um, because he was saying that he figured people are going to spoil themselves either way. There's nothing I as an author can do. And any, real auth and any author will realize that um, no matter what your intention is, uh, there's nothing you can do to prevent spoilers, aside from, at least in Stephen King's chosen medium, creating serialized works. Mm -hmm. Because at the very least, you can only flip to the end of that particular chapter. Um, yeah, although that being said, so you're saying that Therefore, it's okay to... Wh what do you want done? Like, apart from somebody being polite enough not to discuss spoilers. Because, like, you can go on Facebook today and you will know the ending of Breaking Bad by accident because of your feed. That's true. That is true. So are you saying then that I think we, should, we should stop ourselves from posting these reaction things? I think that minimum benefit? of that spoiler alert line with the <coughs> asterisks and the all caps mm. is... At least a, a, a nice gesture on the part of people who have seen something like ahead. Mm. And, I, and there are these people, I'm unfortunate enough to know some people, who take a lot of pride in the scoop. You know, I'm, I was the first to watch something, I finished it first, and I can talk about it first, therefore I'm cooler than you are. Mm. There are these people and you're not cool. Like, that, that, that's just it. Like, if... So what if you know that this person died at the end of Breaking Bad? I I'm not saying that somebody did die, but um, like I said, that's, that's not cool. Now, the other thing, though, is that um, in... No, but, but there's, there's a real betrayal that I see the feeling yeah. of. Like, they're, they're saying, like, oh, you're... I mean, at the same time, there are the sort of people for whom it seems like their world ended the mm -hmm. minute that they even inadvertently heard something about... Which they don't even know is, is if it's true. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, you could be seeding any conversation with all manner of supposed spoilers, and since they don't know what happened, like, you know, they think they heard it, and then they have so much um, pain uh, just by realizing that's, that they might have been spoiled. Um, you contrast that, however, to that recent study where they showed that when they divided people into groups of those who had been spoiled about something, those who knew j the, the gist, gist, whatever, mm, of, of a story, versus the ones who were told the ending, the ones who apparently who had been spoiled... Uh, enjoyed the story more. Said that they enjoyed the story more. Yes. But then again, the once, flaw... Once you survey responded. The flaw about that study is they couldn't really compare like someone, someone's experience of reading the same story <coughs> spoiled and unspoiled. Right? They, they got people... Just watch it again. Right? No, I mean, they, they have a group of people here mm. and another group of people here. One group of people read the story spoiled. One group of people read the story unspoiled, mm. and then they both rate the stories. And it turns out that the people who well, they did this were for a spoiled, number of stories. Yeah, they did this from a, for a number of stories. But the thing is, you don't compare the individual's experience of the same story. Get it? Like it's a different group of people reading the same story. So there's actually no way of really knowing whether the same individual would have enjoyed it more or less with the spoiler or without. Mm -hmm. So that's the of course and. And another rebuttal to that study is that the people don't really care about these stories. Like these were just given to them, like on the like on the day itself of the the experiment. Okay, but that goes read both this. ways. In the same way that you would rewatch or reread a beloved piece of work, I mean that's already been pre-spoiled for you. But it's like the movie that you love that you watch again and again, and seems to get better with every viewing. But but it's different if you actually choose to watch a story. Also, something that they found about the study is people didn't mind spoilers so much if they were given the spoiler before even starting the story. But if it was given in the middle, then they, then they weren't so happy about that. So compare it to shows like Breaking Bad, where you're in the middle of it and then you get spoiled, then it becomes all the more unethical. And right. with, with, with re-watching with, with the same movie, um, sure, you could say that there are some movies that uh, are worth watching again and again, but there are some movies that um, have the greatest impact on the first watching. Yeah. So, like I said, um, there's a lot of surprise in these forms of art. 
and a lot hinges on that surprise actually taking and, and you, you touched on a, a very important point there. It's that first experience of the work of art. If you spoil something, then it's not really the first experience in a way. And with that... Right. Yeah, if, it's like if people knew that in your 10th song of your album upcoming, Amongst Wolves, which is launching in December, that on the 8th song your drummer actually kills himself, uh, the surprise would be lost. Yeah. Okay, so some people like spoilers, some people hate it. But I and then other people actually enjoy them. Either they don't care or they like being spoiled. Yes, uh, but, but I guess the ethics comes in when you take away the choice of the person who, who doesn't know yet whether they want to enjoy the, the work of art, spoiled or unspoiled. So, and we, of course, are pro-choice. And <laughs> speaking of uh, intelligent <laughs> media being spoiled, that brings us to our next topic, which is, of course, intelligent articles being spoiled by dumb commenters. Right. So well, there was this one study. Tell us about that study, Pepe. Um, there's a study that says um, a lot of people, when reading articles, um, the moment that they see these comments... Um, trollish. Yeah, these trollish comments. Polariz are, polarizing uncivil comments. There we go. Now. Thank you. Uh, polarizing uncivil comments. Um, then their idea of the article changes. The reception of the article changes. So let's say they it's consider a, it less credible. Even. Yep. It's a scientific article about an important issue like global warming. Yeah. And despite all the evidence and intelligent arguments that you pack into that article, the moment some reader sees someone say, this is all bunk, mm. or I, I don't agree with this, this is stupid, Mm. or something like that, in, in more words than that. Mm. Then they, they disbelieve the article and the potential education that they could have gotten from the article is lost. And more so, insidious than that, they, the very field of study itself in their eyes is tainted because they see this controversy or this debate and they think that, well, I guess it's not all true. So it plays into the whole anti-intellectualism yeah. thing? And, uh, yes. And it's led at least to one website to shut down their comment section completely because of such a, of such a study. Right. The slightly dumber little brother of Scientific American, Popular, Popular Science, Science Magazine, uh, recently released a, a, a long piece uh, explaining why they're shutting down the comment section of their, uh, of their website. They, have, they cited that same study, um, and they were also talking about how, for them, it was a move to defend science itself, referring also to an earlier, uh, I think it was the New York Times or the New York Post article about the new age of denialism, at least in American politics and all around the world, mm. where science itself, um, scientific discoveries and fields of studies which have long since been established, but that in, in itself has become fair political game. Like politicians who go up and seriously say that creationism might have merit or that climate change is not caused by humans. So what do we think about this? Is this a good thing? Of course, it, it, on one hand, it ensures that science does not get thrown like, out, of the, out of the window for some people just, by, just because of these trolls. Mm. But on the other hand, there's this whole discussion <coughs> that yeah. just gets stopped. And um, I think like um, a lot of the people who are affected by these articles are those who are not not exactly scientifically literate. Because if you're scientifically literate, you you would be able to see um, which of these things are established, which of these match with the current data that we have, mm -hmm. and and you'd be able to tell if oh what what this guy is just angry at the writer or just angry because this mm -hmm. doesn't fit into his or her worldview. So you can tell which comments are not um, exactly sound in arguing. But um, unfortunately, a lot of people in the world are scientifically illiterate. And we don't need, the, we don't need even more intellectualism, especially now that uh, science has shown us that, for example, climate change, we're responsible for global warming, um, if we ex encounter more denialism, that's going to make things even worse. Yeah. It's going to make politics, um, the politics of uh, global warming, more difficult to tackle. Like, 
if we want to enact these policies that would help the environment uh, recuperate, they might be rejected because of these people who don't know what the science is saying. To quote the popular science article, I think they were going on about how these public comments will shape public opinion, the public opinion will shape public policy, the public policy will shape actual, uh, actual policy which does fund the sciences. Uh, at least that's in the American context, their main problems are with creationism and with, uh, the climate, and with climate change. I mean, the fact that they've even called it a debate. And you can, and you can see that a lot of the same people who, uh, who are pushing for the climate change, um, that, that man-made climate change is a myth, they got a lot of their tactics from the creationists. For the Philippines, however, for the Philippines, um, it shows you that even liberal people are not immune to this kind of uh, uh, to, to this kind of anti-intellectualism. Like our local example would be uh, GMOs, and how a lot of other people who you know otherwise they're like, no, I'm scientifically literate. Like I, I, I know that evolution uh, is a, is an actual thing, and I know that climate. I'm, I'm environmentally aware enough to to try to prevent uh, man-made climate change in my own small way. But at the same time, there are a lot, those same people will talk about the dangers of GMO crops and how and, and, and it inevitably leads to things like the vandalization of the, the vandalism yeah. of, of our GMO crops uh, yeah, here, even here in the Philippines. But you, you have, to, have to wonder about these people. Mm. Like they go to a science website mm. to read the article because yeah. if they didn't read it then I, I guess you couldn't count them among the people would be valid for that study that, mm. that says comments influence how people think about the article. Yeah. And but they believe that short, inane, dumb comment. Well have you read any popular science that? magazine? Like it's it really is aimed at I wonder how to say this without seeing seeming The accurate. layman. The layman, yeah. Okay. Um because there there's several mag science magazines. It's Scientific American. Yeah. So honestly like until recently it was quite difficult to read because all they would do is they would reprint scientific journals. Mm -hmm. Uh, journal articles, the discovery, which is somewhere in the middle, and then there's popular science, which their articles are the most accessible. Um, there you go, accessible, and not dumbed down. Not well. Let's see, I'm trying. Okay. Uh, the, <laughs> but at the same time, like if you look at their ads, like um, they have things for like sensual massage or something in popular science magazine. Not that sensual massage is a dumb. It, yeah. yeah, yeah. But but I mean, it's you can tell that popular science is aimed at the layman with their yeah. and then even their. Even the topics that they're going on about, it's the new hot new fast car, it's the cool new like fighter plane, whatever. So, uh, not that um, fighter planes are, are dumb. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, I subscribe to Combat Aircraft <laughs> yeah. monthly. Okay. Um, the, but, but yeah, I think their, their concern would be these same people, they'd read these articles, they, for, for, to be informed about the latest in scientific trends, and then you have things in the comment, people in the comments, like, um, chipping away at, at their at people's belief, for lack of a better term. But but what are we losing here? Let's say okay, you you stop discussions, you disable the commenting section. Yeah. What about the people who genuinely want to learn more about They've the article? They've kept their other channels open. Their email, their Twitter mm -hmm. uh, is still is still ongoing, and they have and they said that they would be opening articles. Uh, they would be opening comments on certain articles. The real issue is. They simply do not have the resources to fully moderate all of the comment mm. sections on their articles. Uh, I mean, they said that if they could moderate it, then then perhaps they would consider keeping it open, but they can't. So they figure it's best to just shut it down and then, but then still keep other avenues open through email, through uh, Twitter, the same way that we've shut down our own uh, comments for our mm -hmm. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So. So I guess that's a perfect opportunity to, to tell you guys about why this YouTube <coughs> comment section is disabled. It's not that we think that the scientific integrity of what we're saying will be compromised by dumb or troll, dumb comments or trolls. It's just that we don't have the, the moderation, the manpower. The, the manpower for moderation that we do in our other channels, which is uh, on Facebook. There's a link here. And... <laughs> On our website or Twitter or all of our other social media channels, you have this portal page right here. You realize you're just waving your arms around, and Garrick is not going to put these links in. No, he's going to yeah, put he will, them. He's really good at this, this right. thing. But anyway, thank you so much.
for tuning in to the Filipino Free Thinkers podcast. It's also a video. Till next time. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.